What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I am back with another Fortnite video and today I'm going to be giving you guys 5 tips in becoming a better player in Battle Royale. Now I know there are many amazing players out there, a lot will be watching this video and will know all of what I will be explaining. This isn't for you guys. This is for the people trying to learn the basics and becoming a better overall player. These tips are meant for newcomers to the game, but hey, if you ain't that, don't skip away, you might still learn something. But before we get into the video guys, I'm giving away 2800 juicy V-Bucks to be in with a chance to win them, simply subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, hit that bell button to turn on notifications, drop a like on the video and leave a comment down below. Good luck you sexy bastards. Okay so there are a few things which in my opinion, if you do and use 100% will improve your game. These are tips that have been passed on to me and although I am far from the best player, my overall playstyle has improved a lot. And it is thanks to these tips I will be sharing with you guys today. So first up, your settings. You might want to adjust these before doing anything to give you an advantage in many, many scenarios. So let's take a look. Now your controller sensitivity, this is up to you. Some like this high, others like it much slower. Me personally, I started at a low sensitivity and then moved up a few digits. So these and the ADS and scope sensitivity, I either suggest you leave or play around with a bit, but remember those default values. Maybe take a photo on your phone of them. The first one you wanna make sure is off is the sprint cancels reload. This definitely you don't want on. Toggle targeting also, I suggest you leave off unless you have come over from games such as PUBG. I tried using this once and it was painful. It basically takes a click to zoom in and it locks zoomed in until you click again. I much prefer to hold that trigger to aim. Auto equip better items. To me, it makes sense to have this on. Vibration, I would suggest you have off. I mean, if anything, it will put you off your game more than anything else, but this is your choice here. Aim assist is a must, people. Don't forget, this is console, folks. Reset building choice, this is also a must when it comes to building in this game. It's one of the most skilled parts. It will save your life more times than you know. Now I know at first building is really hard. I was in that same boat, I'm still learning now. But having this on definitely makes sense for those learning. Because if you turn this off, you can forget the rotation of certain building paths. I mean, if you finish off one defense building with a ceiling, move on, get shot from behind, it won't reset to a wall, so you'll lose vital time switching back from the ceiling to the wall. If it resets every time you build, you'll get the hang of exactly what combo of buttons to press to build what you need to build. So this guys, in my opinion, definitely leave on turbo building. This I initially had off, and at a time I thought was the right choice, but upon learning the game, and getting used to building at a faster rate, turbo building helps out a lot. It automatically builds the next place while holding down the build button. Auto material change. This 100% also guys, make sure you have on. If you are panic building and run out materials of a certain material, i.e. wood, it will auto build in stone or metal depending on what materials you have left. This saves vital time when trying to build really quickly. So make sure you have this on. Controller auto run. This although isn't a massive point in becoming a better player, it can help you out in certain scenarios of panic. But it's up to you here people. And those are the recommended settings I suggest you use. So the next thing you want to do, which to be honest most will probably already have, is a decent headset. Sound horn in this game is unbelievable. With the right headset you can pinpoint a person's exact location within a certain radius of you, down to a T. Now I can't actually recommend an headset uh, for you to use as it depends on your platform of play. Plus a lot of headsets nowadays offer what's needed to also become a sound whore. Me personally, my headset is the Turtle Beach X800s which are amazing. I can literally make out exactly what angle a player is coming from and where they're running to. But I couldn't do this with a basic headset. So get yourself a decent pair and join the sound whore bastards such as myself. Next up we have map work and knowing where to land. I mean there are certain points on a map which you just do not want to land in, especially if you are newish to the game, or your playstyle is to set up first, gather materials and so on before running headfirst into a battle. So we have the map on screen now. Me personally I'd stay clear of the main areas. Also fly away from the path the bus takes. What I'd suggest you do here is head for the sidelines of the map in between certain areas as marked here. The reason I say the side of the map is because for the majority of the start of the game, while you gather materials and weapons, you won't have to watch your back. 
If you land in a central area, enemies will come from all angles, and when you are threatened from one angle, you can easily get picked off from another. There isn't really areas of Moscow to get the best loot either. I mean, everywhere people, I've seen the best loot spawn all over the place. Most people bombard busy areas because they like to get into the battle straight away and get as many kills as possible. If you, like I said, want to get your bearings, gather mats and get those weapons before jumping in, definitely take my advice here and head to areas between certain locations on the sides of the map. Next up, arranging your inventory. This is a must and it truly helps out in almost every scenario. I hate watching people who don't take notice of this because they are truly at a disadvantage. Set up an order within your infantry and stick with it every game. I know of many great players who arrange their inventories in the exact same order every game. Now the exact order of how you do this is down to you. Just set it up in an order which you remember because I don't think here there is a best way of doing it. As long as your weapons are slightly together and shields and potions are also together, you should be fine. The last thing you want to do is when you get rushed, you switch to a shield out of panic of not knowing where things are. I've become a victim of this many many times. A lot of people slot shotguns first, so if you have two, make sure they are slightly together so you can get off two quick shots while swapping between them. Shotguns in my opinion are the most used weapons, hence this example. If you have an auto rifle, hand cannon or anything else, put that in that third slot to quickly take out downed opponents and reserving that shotgun ammo for anyone trying to sneak up on you. Some people I know play every game with the exact same loadout and do extremely well. They will search for the same weapon types and put them in the same slots they are used to. Doing this much like building it becomes basically instinct of where things are and you don't even have to look. People who have this skill down in my opinion have a major advantage. I'm still working on such a loadout but it's coming guys for sure. And lastly people is building. Now for me going into Fortnite after months off not really building when I first played and seeing all these pros building shit in literally seconds it kind of made me feel a little underwhelmed to play the game. The rate and speed at what some of these people can build is staggering. But remember this guys, they weren't always this good and when they started playing it they definitely weren't this good. It obviously comes with loads of practice and that's what it is, practice makes perfect. For me this is what I'm working on now. With the settings I suggested to you guys earlier, just practice even if you have to go into save the world game mode and just practice in there. Just seeing how quick you can build, getting used to the mechanics of building and available structures there are. Even going into the BR mode if the saving the world mode isn't available to you and not taking it really seriously and just gathering mats and building. Start off by seeing how quick you can build a square base around you then do the same and place a ramp. This in my opinion is the number one panic defense strat everyone uses. The faster the better. You get shot from behind, you build a square base around you then build a ramp where the top side is directed at that incoming fire and you have a great head glitching advantage. It just takes plenty of practice and I personally know it can be off putting when it all goes wrong or you just ain't quick enough and feel you're at a major disadvantage. But you ain't the only one guys, there are many of us out there but it's all about practice. Fails will come with it but it adds to the fun. But in my opinion getting the building mechanics down really does give you a major major advantage so get learning guys. And people we have come to the end of the video, I truly hope these tips helped you guys out. Like I said the pros out there watching this maybe know all of these basics already and that's fine. They will understand we ain't all pros and that they weren't always pros. On that note guys I am out, thanks as always for stopping by, if you enjoyed the video leaving a like it really does help me out and hopefully people I will see you on that next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand.